So uh, last week, we basically we worked on two main things. The first day was just really review, talking about what a function is. Uh, I like the uh, analogy of a function being a, a, a vending machine. You input an x value, it gives you back a y value. And it's going to make some sort of graph shape. Uh, so far, the only, only ones we need to talk about are the polynomial family. So that means it could be linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic. Um, you're expected to be able to just know the general properties of, I think it's up to five or six. But honestly, I might throw a question in there where it's to the power of eight. Because really, graphs to the power of eight should look like graphs to the power of six or four or two, because they're all, I mean, they're all even functions. So uh, next week, we're going to talk about exponential functions. And we'll kind of do the same thing. We'll do a lesson where we review exponents, then we talk about what their graphs look like. Uh, the next function after that is something called a logarithmic function, and it'll follow the same sort of pattern. And the last one is a sinusoidal function. Uh, today's lesson is kind of a generic one, though, that covers all types of functions. It's a, it's a special sequence of, I don't know, buttons in your calculator where we can take data and turn data into an equation. So you're going to be given a table of values, typically, and being, and being asked to take that table of values and make an equation out of it. So... Uh, let's hop into it. Uh, here's just a review of all the sorts of things you should be able to do on your calculator, though. So, You guys know how to type an equation in, how to graph it, how to go to set a table, how to use values, zero, min, max, intersect. This is all review-ish. Or should we do an example to start? Or nobody cares? No. You're good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let me just hop right into an example of something you might get asked then. This is a very typical question. You're going to be given a word problem, more than likely, and the word problem is going to have a whole bunch of data attached to it. So, you good? Yeah. Okay, so here's the example. The one-hour record for how far you can travel on a bicycle in an hour is as follows. So, 1996, the guy was able to travel 78 kilometers in one hour. Look at this. Insane. By 2009, though, the world record was someone could travel 90 kilometers on a bike in one hour. That means they went 90 kilometers an hour on a bike. Holy That's like highway speed on a bike. Oh, it's not my, yeah, well. If I got passed by a bike in my car, I'd be like, how slow am I going? <laughs> okay, so... What we're going to do is two things here. We're going to do an interpolation and an extrapolation. Have you guys ever heard those words before? Yeah, I Interpolate know. and extrapolate? Do you know what they mean, like off the top of your head? Could you give me a definition? Okay, how about I come back to those words in a second? Let me show you how to solve this question. Okay, I actually have all of the buttons on the next couple of screens. So follow along with me if you have your calculator. Maybe grab your calculator out. If you're given an equation, like a set of data to work with, first thing you want to do is you want to press stat, because we're going to do some statistics, hence stat. And then it pulls up this screen right here, and what you'd like to do is you'd like to do some editing. So just press 1 to edit. Do you want one? Okay. Now, this particular screen is going to differ depending on... Who last used your calculator? Has anybody ever used this before? You would have because you took dash two last year with stats. Okay. So you might have a little experience where this essentially is L1, list one, L2, list two. You may have data in there currently, or you may not. So I have data in there currently. Here's how to get rid of the data. Go up, press up to L1, and press clear. Then press enter. You see how it gets rid of it all? Okay, I want to show you a common mistake in case this happens. I want to go over now and clear L2. If I press delete, it actually literally gets rid of the entire column, which is a bit of an issue then because now I don't have like a an L list number two sitting right there. So if you do that by accident and you get rid of the list, you can actually put it back in by going second button number two. You see how there's an L2 down there? You can actually put the name back in there and it'll bring the data with you. So don't delete it, clear it, and that'll get rid of all your data. So hopefully everybody has a calculator screen that looks something like this. You have an L1 and an L2, and they're both cleared out. If you have an L3 and an L4 and an L5 afterwards, that's fine, but we usually only use two listed. So far, so good? Okay. 
The next thing you want to do is you want to start typing in your data in each column. And essentially the first column is like your x value, and your second column is like your y values. So I need to go back to the previous equation right here, and I need to start typing in, like say, 1996. 1998, 1999. Does that make sense what I'm going to do? So type in all of the years, 2003, 2007, 2008, 2009. Okay. And then once you guys get done typing the first column, go over to the next column and start typing in how many kilometers it is. So 7804, I'll just let you guys do the same thing here. 79, 86, 77, 87, 12, and 90, 60. Uh, by, your, by the time you're done typing in all of this data into your calculator, the first thing you need to know is that these two lists have to be the same length. Okay? If you have one column that has more numbers in it than the other column, you'll probably get an error called dimension mismatch. So if that ever comes up as an error message, it's because these two things are not actually the same one. Everybody okay with being able to type data in? Okay, uh, I'll do another example with you and you can rewatch from the top. So maybe just follow along for now. Okay, let me go back to my notes here. So after you've typed your data in, it looks something like this. Uh, you don't have these numbers, by the way, but you have data being typed in. Okay, so uh, step three, you have to make sure the plot is on. Because what you're going to do is you're going to plot this data. So if you go to y equals, see how I have an equation sitting in there right now? First of all, get rid of the equation. We don't want the old equation. And then press up. And we want to turn on plot number one. That makes sense. Now, you probably don't have to do this every single time. But it wouldn't hurt to try to figure out what you are plotting. So do you see how above the y equals button it says stat and plot? Well, that's where if you have statistics, you're going to plot them. So if you press second Y, it'll tell you what's going to plot. So if plot 1 is currently on, it's going to plot L1 and L2 with these little squares. And if you really wanted to, you can kind of change that around. But I don't see any purpose in that. So just make sure that L1 and L2 is where our data is. So currently we have our plot on. So with me? Okay, the next step is we have to change the zoom to make sure the zoom actually shows up. So to do that, I'm going to say go to zoom. And if you scroll all the way down to number 9, number 9 is a zoom that's been configured for when you do statistics. It's zoom stat. And it'll make it so that when you press that, it basically plots a whole bunch of points on a graph. And hopefully yours looks like mine. It does. Cool. Make sense? Yeah. Well, this is called a scatter plot graph. And... I mean, it has a lot of uses when you try to apply math to, like, the sciences. Um, like, when we would do, say, like, a physics or a chemistry lab, if we're recording a whole bunch of data and I ask you to plot a graph, you can actually plot graphs in your graphing calculator quite nicely and put equations through them, like lines of best fit. So, everyone's okay for this step? Okay. So, after that, you should have a graph. And granted, the graph in this particular picture is not the graph that we just made. Uh, this is actually from the exponential section I have. What we now need to do is we need to create what's called a regression equation. And your calculator, a very powerful tool, has the ability to basically make an equation based on our data. So you're going to want to press stat. And then we've already edited our stats. So you want to go over to this calc button right here. And if you go over and calculate, your goal now is to calculate something here. 
Now, um, Keely, you probably learned how to do one of our stats last year. I'm thinking in 20-2. Um, okay, well, whatever. Um, we're going to use, over the course of the whole unit, we're going to use some of these buttons. Four, five, six, and seven are a linear regression, a quadratic regression, a cubic regression, and a quartic regression. Okay. So those are the main ones that we're going to focus on today. Four, five, six, and seven. Uh, next week, when we talk about exponential graphs, you guys will need to use an exponential regression. Uh, the week after that, when we do logarithmic graphs, that's actually what LN stands for. That's going to be a logarithmic graph. This will be an exponent. And this will be a sinusoidal. So these same steps that we're learning right now today. Sinusoidal? Yeah, sinusoidal. So we basically, I have to teach you four different types of functions. Polynomials, exponentials, logarithmics, and sinusoidals. Uh, all of the regression equations are all on this list. You just got to keep scrolling down. Like once you get past zero, it's actually C for sine regression. So we'll do those ones once we learn those functions. So the question I have for you guys though is, what sort of function does our data look like? Like as I go to our graph, does that look linear, quadratic, cubic, quintic? Like which one do you think? fits. I'd say linear, yeah. It looks like it's more or less a straight line. If the graph did like this, I might think quadratic. If it did that, maybe I'd think cubic. But based on what I'm seeing here, it looks roughly like it's in a straight line, doesn't it? So unless it says otherwise, you have to use your best, um, your, your best judgment. It might actually tell you what sort of regression to use. So the equation might say use linear regression, just so it's clear. But if not, use your best judgment. I think it's linear-ish. So go uh, stat, calculate, and go down to linear regression and press enter. Okay, at this point here, there are two different scenarios that happen depending on what calculator you have. Uh, whose calculator shows what mine does? Okay, so I'll start with you guys and I'll troubleshoot the rest of the side. If your calculator shows what mine does, we need to now tell it three things. Okay. We have to tell it where the data is coming from, and then we have to tell it where to put the data. This is where it's coming from, and this is where it's going to go. So if you have this calculator here, you have to type in second one, and that'll bring up an L1. Can you guys find that? That means that you had data in L1. Then you need a comma, which is right above number seven. Then we have to tell it where else our data was. Well, it was in L2. So go second, number two, and it'll bring up L2. So far, so good? Okay, one more thing. We now have to tell the calculator, where do we want our equation to go? And this is the most complicated set of buttons. So you gotta follow carefully here, okay? You're, you're gonna be very good button typers by the end of this unit. Okay. We need a variable. Okay. We wanna tell it to go to Y1. So to find a variable, this x right here, we actually don't want x's, we want y's. So we need to press this button here, vars. That's where the variables are found, vars. Okay. Now if you look at the top of the screen here, it says vars and then y vars. We need a y variable. And then press 1 for function, because that's what we're doing, we're doing functions here. And there's a big list full of variables. Now, you can go ahead and pick whichever one you want, but just to prove a point, I'm going to pick y3. Doesn't really matter. It'll work the same way. Okay, now I'm going to press enter. And what it's going to do is it's going to make an equation for me. It does a little bit of work here, but don't, don't focus on this. Focus on this. Go back to y equals. And now there is now an equation sitting in y3 or for you guys in y1 or y2, whichever one you picked. <laughs> Who has a different calculator? You do. Okay, so maybe I'll just troubleshoot yours individually. So yours. Already gives you L1, L2 there for you. So you need to go down to only store reg equation. This is basically where do you want to put the equation when you're done. And then do the same thing we did. Press bars for variables. Over to y variables. Pick a function. And we'll just do y6. And then go down to calculate. And yours will do the same thing. Only now it's sitting in y6. Can you me off? Give me one sec. Let me. You guys, we'll do it in a second. Okay. I'll just keep on. Anybody else have one of the TI 84s? Okay. So, let's go to the next one. 
This one here really will be a regression. And then uh, inner ready is going to tell you all on and on to work. Uh, so we have the difficulty to work. We want to score our position. And we want to score it in a y variable. So we a variable. Y variable. We're doing functions. And just pick a number. So that's the one. Then we calculate it. And then if you go back to your um, y equals thing, it should be an equation. Yeah. Um, does everybody have the equation that starts with like 0 0.858, something like that? And then there's like a negative 1635. Hopefully you have the same numbers I do. Um, if you want to try to write out the equation, it's very difficult sometimes to write the equation out from Y3. So if you go back to that screen where it, hopefully, hopefully you can find a screen like this. This might tell you how to write out the equation. And I don't, I don't want you to write out every single number. But the equation might be something like y equals a. OK, well, what's a? a is 0.858. To get back to that screen, probably go second, quit. And it should take you back to the last screen. Uh, right behind mode, which is right next to second. You got it? So I'd say like write the equation as y equals 0.858x minus 1635.7. There is our linear equation that the calculator made for us. Because it, it's really hard to try to write the equation off of like this mess right here because there's so many digits. So it may just be easier to write it from the screen here. Here's the coolest part. Everybody ready? Go to your graph now if you haven't. There is an equation that if you've heard the phrase before, it's called a line of best fit. Your graphing calculator will actually statistically calculate the best line that goes through all of the points for you. Now, it doesn't go through them all exactly, but I mean, you can see like it goes through most of them. And if there's a point above the line, there should be some points below the line, roughly about the same. So this is called a regression equation. It's where you take data, put it into your calculator, and it will make an equation for you. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's go back to my question. Then. Now I want to talk about these two words, interpolate and extrapolate. Okay. The question here basically says, what do you think the world record would have been in the year 2006? Was the year 2006 given in this data set? No. But we can probably take a really educated guess as to what it would have been by doing something like this. Second, calculate the value in the year 2006. And hopefully you guys get what I get here. In the year 2006, it would have been about 86.4. That makes sense? Okay. Literally just type in second calculate the value in 2006. Well, that's an interpolation. Let's try an extrapolation. Second calculate the value in the year 2013, and my calculator says invalid. Anybody know why? Anybody figured out what interpolate and extrapolate means? What does inter kind of mean as a prefix? Within. If you're interpolating, you're trying to find another value within your data set. What's your window going from? Well, if I take a look at my window here, my window is going from 1994 to 2010. So I was looking for a number within my data set. Extrapolate is where you try to look for something in the future. If someone tries to ask you to extrapolate, it means like build on what we know and move forward. Is the year 2013 in my current window size? No, my window size currently goes only up to 2010. So to extrapolate, I'm first going to have to change my window size to go to at least 2013. Regraph the thing. Second, calculate the value in the year 2013 now. Now 2013 shows up. It's called an extrapolate because we've now guessed what's going to happen in the future. Uh, for this one here, I got 92.4. That makes sense? Um, a field that really would, would rely on extrapolation would be something like, um, say, finance or perhaps uh, geography. Let me give you some examples here. If you were a financial planner, 
you can look at the past and see how the stock markets did, right? Do you know for sure what's happening in the future? Well, no, you're not a mind reader. You're not Nostradamus who can predict the future, right? But using the past to figure out patterns might allow you to make an educated guess as to what's happening in the future. Does that make sense? That's extrapolating. Um, in, in the field of geography, if you're a climate change scientist, what they try to do is they try to figure out again, well, what, did the, what was like the temperature like last year? and the year before that, and the year before that. And they start making a graph where the graph is rising, and so they extrapolate, and they say, I think in five years, the temperature on Earth is gonna be really hot, you know, whatever the number is, you know what I mean? That's extrapolating, using previous data to help make a prediction in the future. There is no guarantee, though. Like, when it comes to especially climate change, for example, um, lots of scientific models say, by the year 2010, Florida's underwater. It hasn't happened yet. It still might, don't get me wrong, but there, there is no like, you know, there's no money back guarantee on some of these things. But can you guys see how that's a useful tool though? So, um, really, all of the questions that you get of this type look very similar. It's a lot of calcula calculations in your calculator. That was redundant. It's a lot of button mashing, basically. You have to know what a whole bunch of buttons in your calculator do. So the good news is, though, once you've learned how to do this once, this applies to all data types, so linear, quadratic, cubic, quintic, all of our polynomials, and later when we do exponentials, logarithms, and sinusoidal, it's the same buttons. So. Okay, one last thought here, then we'll try another example here. Um, the question you guys get on these are probably going to be numerical response, and unless you know what you're doing, you can't really guess all that well. You know what I mean? Like, there is no work to this question. The answer here was 86.4, and the answer was 92.4. Like, there, there's no show your work to this. Right? It literally is just, if you know how to run your computer, your calculator, it will do the modeling for you. If you don't, you're kind of screwed. You know what I mean? So, uh, let me show you some more examples then. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, i got to talk quick about a set of notes here. Um, the term I use here is called regression. I bolded that. Your graphing calculator is essentially a fancy computer. It can regress data into an equation, but it always puts it into standard form. Do you guys know the term standard form? Have I used that phrase before? Yeah, it usually fits the form like a 3x plus 1 or 8x squared plus 7x plus 2. Uh, I just want to point out the difference in formatting here. In standard form, leading coefficients and constant terms are usually very easy to see. I do need to point out, though, that you may be asked something in a factored form, which basically means it would look like this, y equals x plus 2, x minus 1. This isn't in the standard form anymore, but the use of this, though, is it tells you what your x-intercepts are. Do you guys know what the x-intercepts of this equation would be? Uh, negative 2 and plus 1. you you gotta, you got to flip the equation around. This is basically our first unit, again. The whole idea, if you can find it in a factored form, that tells you what your x-intercepts are. But the point I wanted to make, though, is that this will make your equation be in standard form. So, um, Okay, let's try another one. So if you weren't here for the first example, let's take her from the very top again. So, uh, First thing you're going to want to do is you want to want to go back to your y equals, and you're going to want to clear out anything that's old in there. So like, I'd turn off the equation. I may even go back and turn off your plot. So make sure that your calculator is completely fresh. There's nothing sitting in there. Good. If that plot, by the way, is left on while you try to do other equations, your calculator might give you error messages. So if you're getting error messages while graphing things, that's the first thing I'm going to come check. Make sure the plot is currently off unless we for sure want it on. Okay. So, okay, first button to press is stat, right? Second row, middle, stat. We are doing some stats. Press number one for edit. We're going to edit our list. Now, there is currently data in here, which we want to get rid of. Don't delete. Clear. So go up to the very top, L2. Press clear and enter. It'll get rid of all the old data. And clear. OK, so hypothetically, though, just in case someone else didn't catch it, if you delete it, like Thomas just said he did, to get it back, press second. L2 in that spot and re-put the data back there again and then, then go back and clear. Because what you want is to have an L1 and an L2 that are completely blank.
Does that make sense to you guys who are doing this for the first time? Okay, follow along then. So I, I just have a I'm not showing you. You're not paying attention yet. So go stat, edit, and yours is already clear, so we're good to go. Okay. So follow along from here, okay? You guys still with me? Okay, next step. We need to type some data in. So what we're going to do is the first column is going to go all down L1. So that'd be like 500, 700, 200, oops, not 2,000. Uh, don't mistype something. That really screws things up. 460 and 740. So put that down the first axis and then go over to the next one and type in the second column. So 325, 195, 520, 351, and 169. <laughs> Oh, you're way ahead of me there. Yeah. Okay, so then you need bars. Over to my bars. Okay. Um. Mine is cool. Has everybody managed to type their data in then? Okay. Make sure, double check that you don't mistype your data, because there is nothing worse than getting a question wrong when there is literally no work you show me. Like all you're gonna do is tell me the answer when you're done. And so if you don't get the answer I get, exactly, you get the question wrong. So just double check the data is correct and make sure the two numbers are like the same length. So uh, then you need to go back to y equals and you have to make sure that, that plot is on. That's another really common mistake kids will have. They'll, they'll say, Chris or Shalk, why, why do I not see my data? They'll be like, well, you can't see it because you're not asking a calculator to plot it. Okay. Okay. Because I didn't have the decimal. Okay, so then go to y equals. Go up and turn the plot on. That's it. Press the power button once there. It's just on standby mode. Okay. Okay, now that the plot is on, we want to make sure that our data is showing up. So I want to go zoom. And then on zoom, we want to go down to zoom number nine. It's going to do us a fit right for you. You don't have to do your own window sizes. It should make the data to show up nice and perfect for you. Does it look like mine? Yep. Press zoom. Yeah. And then scroll all the way down. So let's zoom. Scroll all the way down to number nine. <coughs> what it's going to do is it's going to make it like a nice consistent window size when you see all the data. So now you have to send data. Yeah. Okay. The next question you have to ask yourself then is. What does the data look like? Is it exponential, logarithmic, sinusoidal? Well, we haven't learned those yet, so ignore those. But is it linear, cubic, quadratic, quartic? Like, what does the graph look like? And hopefully you'd agree it looks linear, right? So go stat. Then from stat, we want to go calculate. We need to calculate something, so that's the sideways button over. And then we need the number four again, the linear regression. Okay, so... Everyone's got a slightly different one here. So let me show the one, if you have my calculator again, let me show you mine, and then I'll troubleshoot you in a second, okay? You have to tell the calculator where your data is coming from. Our data is coming from L1, which is going second and button number one. That makes L1 show up. Then you need a comma. Comma is right above the number seven. Then we need to tell it, well, we also put data in L2. So go second. L2, we need another comma, and then we have to tell the calculator where to put the data when we're done. So regardless of what calculator you have here, this step's the same by the way, it's going to go into a Y variable. So to do that, press VARS right here, variables. I'll show you in a second, okay? Then we need a Y variable, so press over to find a Y variable. Press 1 because we're using functions. 
and then pick one of these letters. I don't care which one it is. I'll pick Y4 just because. Just to prove that 4 works. And then I'll press Enter. And it should, if I go to my Y equals screen, give me an equation. And if I go to my graph, there should be a line straight through all of that. Let me hop to So for you, your calculator already has L1 and L2 data set in the so you're good to go. We have to go down to something called the so word the reg equation. Okay. That's the regression equation we just sure. make right here. Let me tell you where to put it. Where does it want to go? Well, this is the same thing I just did. We need a variable of ours. We need a Y variable. So we work with functions and just pick one. I don't care which one Y2. Then for you, go down to calculate. It should give you an equation sitting in Y2, and you should now have a line going through all your data. Okay. Okay. Okay, so for you, you've got a line of two set up already. So you go down to store, right equation. Basically, the calculator is asking you where it's coming from, where's it going to. Okay. Now, what you want it to go into a Y variable, so that a bar is a variable. Go over to Y variables. We work with functions, and then just have to go to y one If you go to calculate it, it should now give you an equation sitting in y1, and if you graph it, go through all the points. Okay, so you've got Lynn right here twice. So we need this to start. L1 and L2 tells us where the data is from. We need one more comma. That's going to be this. Okay, so after the second comma that you want there, we now want to tell it where to put the equation. Bars is a variable. Over to y variables. We're doing functions. I don't care which one you pick. Five. Press enter. It will give you an equation in slot five. And the graph should go right there. Aren't you in my No, the graph is So yours is It already does what I want and else you for it. So you go down to store right equation and basically say, well, where do you want to put? You need a variable, bars, variables. Go over to y variables. Oh yeah, that's on the motion. And I don't care if you pick one. If you then calculate it, it's going to give you an equation, throw it in y1 for you, and it should be for all your points. Wait, um, you got a question still, too? Okay, so you need to go. Now you put it in the store. Call the center. And then now we've got a job. Oh, my God. Wait, any other troubleshootings I need to work with here? Okay, so last thing we got to do then is answer some questions. So sorry if you're already ahead of me here. Let's talk through the three questions you were asked. The first one is, what does the y-intercept mean in this context? Well, first let's find the y-intercept. Um, how do you find a y-intercept? Second calculate the value when x is 0. And it already says it's invalid. Why is it invalid? The window, the window range doesn't start as low as zero. Actually, the window currently, the window actually starts at 146 for me. You should put x is zero. Well, but we need to make sure the window actually can handle that. So I'll start with the window at x is zero, and then I'll then I'll do my value. When x is zero, and I got 6.5. Well, I just made, moved my window so that at least x can be 0, right? Currently, your window is way high, right? Yeah, so to start at 0, so then you can do second calculate the value when x is 0. That's okay. Okay, now let's talk about what that means, though. 
what are the axes of this graph? Um, the y-axis is the cost per shirt. The x-axis is the number of shirts. If you buy zero shirts, how much would it cost? Yeah, it's almost like the more shirts you buy, the less it costs. Does that make sense? All right, look, look at the data here. As you start buying more and more t-shirts, the graph goes down because the cost, this right here is how much it cost, and this is how many shirts you buy. So as you buy more shirts, your costs come down. Does that make sense? So according to the, uh, uh, according to the y-intercept, this would be if you buy no shirts, I guess it would cost you six fifty. I don't know if that's really reasonable because I don't know why you'd buy zero shirts. But like if you bought one shirt, for example, what would one shirt cost you? Um, okay, six forty nine, I guess. Does that make sense? But as soon as you start buying a hundred shirts, well, now they only cost you or two hundred shirts, and it costs you five twenty, right? So as you buy in bulk, it costs less. Um, what's the slope of the graph? How can I find the slope? Anybody have any ideas where to find the value? Second quit. Let's run up the equation. Second uh, mode, right next to it. Second mode. Let's just go back where the Lin equation shows up. It's uh, y equals negative 0.0065x plus 6.5. Press enter. <laughs> Press enter and it'll pull up the last thing you did. So hopefully now you have an equation that says y equals negative 0 0.0065 plus 6.5. You know how I just said the y-intercept was 650? Guys, why is the y-intercept 650? Because there's a 6.5 right here. Oh. Boom. Okay. Well, then where's the slope? Well, it's negative 0 0.0065. So what does the slope mean? Negative 0 0.0065 means that every shirt you buy, the price goes down by that much. Does that make sense? So the price keeps going down little by little, negative, because the price decreases the more you buy. OK, last question. We've got to try to figure out where we get an, a price of $1.50 per shirt. Let me show you what not to do first. Second calculate the value of 150. And it's 649. That actually just calculated how much it would cost if I bought one and a half shirts. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for the value at 150. I'm actually looking for where the price is at 150. So of all of the different uh, calculate options, which one helps you do that? Anybody know? The, I think two, two, well, value, if you know an x value, it'll find a y value. That's not what we need. Zero will help you find an intercept, or an in, uh, like a, an x-intercept. That's not what we need. Max and min is if you have a quadratic. What we actually need is the next one, an intersect. But we need another line for it to intersect with. So we have to go to y equals, put in 1.50 as a new equation. Now if I graph it, you see how there's a line right across here at the bottom at 1.5? Yeah, so then go second calculate an intersection and find where these graphs cross based on the first curve and the second curve. So first curve, second curve, put it as close to the intersection point as you can, but don't forget to press enter. And uh, hopefully you get what I just got here, 769. The upside to this is if you're very technologically savvy, it's basically it's a lot of buttons to learn. The downside to this is that if you don't get it right, like you have to have, you're going to have to have exactly the right number. Like there's no wiggle room on this. So there's not really a lot of room for guessing. There are a lot of little steps along the way here where you could screw up, right? Like you have to learn what all of these different buttons accomplish in your calculator to solve this question. 
So if you buy 769 shirts, it would be $1.50 a shirt. That makes sense? Okay, let's try another one. Um, yeah, this is my last example, isn't it? Uh, this one's a bit challenging because you actually have uh, a lot of data to type in. Um, this is the first set of columns. But then you have another set and a third set. Rather than having it all in one big row, they've actually put it out into like a column and then another column and another column. Do you guys see how this data works here? Where you're going to have to type all of this in, then type in all of this, then type in all of this in L1. And then you have to type in this column, this column, and this column in L2. So it's actually going to take us quite a while just to type all of our data into the calculator. That makes sense. So that's one of the crappy things about doing this section is it might take you a while to type it all in. So uh, take a minute and start typing equate, start typing data in basically. Okay, so good questions. So first thing I'd suggest to go back to y equals and get rid of all the old equations. We don't want them. Um, you may even want to turn the plot off, but that might be silly because you're going to return it back on again. So you do want to go to stat, to edit, and it gets you back to this screen. Go up to like say L2 and do not press delete. Clear. Press clear. Yeah, you want to clear and enter and go over, up, clear and enter and uh, now start typing in numbers so uh, I'm gonna go stand over here so I can see them so, uh, what about L1? so L2 should be all of your speeds so go from like 90 all the way down to 76 <laughs> then keep going from 38 all the way down to 79 and then keep going from 83 down to 49 like let's uh let's talk again in five minutes after you've typed all this stuff in <laughs> No, What's that? No. 90 to 76. So like this is going to be L1, and this one's going to be L2, but this is still L1, just got to keep going. And this is L2, and this is L1, this is L2. You just Once you finish getting down to 76, keep going from here, keep going from here. Does that make sense? Rather than having one really long column, they did like this section, and then this kind of came next to it. So. In my L2. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to put it in L1 oh. and then put your distance in L2. So just follow basically around. Yeah. Okay, well, I can just break it. Okay. 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 Okay.
Um, I've just finished typing in all of my data. What? All of it? No, sorry, I meant all of my data in the first column. I just want to point something out here. Can you guys see how it says like L1 with like a little bracket 44? That tells you how many there are, and this really sucks for me. Uh, I only have 44 numbers, and I feel fairly confident that's three columns of 15, which is 45. <laughs> you get what I'm saying here? But it's, it's at least at least I know I have a mistake, so I need to go back through and like check all of them. So if you're not ending on 46 being the next number, um, yeah, go back and see if you missed one. Oh, this is the worst. 65, How do I check? 55. I just re go back and read through them all like I am here. 81, 83, 25, 25, 77, 32. 76, okay, here's 48, 92, 22, 31, 50, 33, 27, 32, 47, 95, 24, 23, 79, that's up to 30, okay, 83, 50, 48, 81, 42, 31. 38. Ah, there it is. Okay, 38. I'm so scared I'm going to miss that. 29. I'm already so far. 77. Uh, 76. 71. 55. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. Okay. Um, make sure that your two lists of data have the same length, by the way. If they don't end up on number 45, then, um, yeah, you made a mistake. Okay, 94.5. Yeah, I'm done. Like, you have the answers and everything? No. Oh, you just have all the data typed in? I'm done. Just bear with me. I'm a little behind then. Okay, well, you know how last time we did a linear regression? Um, now do quadratic regression. I don't really get that. Because right? no. it should give you a parabola shape this time, or at least a curve shape. 81, 76.5. 100.3. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1. 9.1.
Go back and just retype it then. Woo! Okay, my two columns match the same length. It means I probably did it right. So for me, I've typed in on my data. Can you guys see how it says number 46 down there? So if, it, if I'm trying to type in the number 46, it means I've finished 45 of them. So I think I have all mine typed. This one's pretty extreme. Like there's a lot of data here. Okay, so if you have all your data typed in, next thing you want to do is go to y equals. Make sure the plot is on. If the plot's not on, then start over. That's not going to work, right? Mine doesn't say what yours says. Well, because you've got data in L6, L5, L4, L3. What's that? Well, you're supposed to have data in two columns, right? Oh, my God. Okay, just watch for now. We'll fix this in a bit. Because you need to put all your data just in two columns all the way down. I okay, that was supposed to be 130.4. <laughs> right? But I actually okay. hit enter. Okay, so then just make it 130.4. Like just rewrite over top of it. Right? Like if, it, if it's wrong, just, oh, go, you just, go, over just go right and just write in 130.4. Right? And it'll just get rid of it. Okay. Okay, so at this point now, we need to go stat. No, we need to go zoom number nine, and hopefully you have data that looks something like this. Okay, so this is a scatter plot of data, and hopefully you'd agree that it's kind of curve shaped. So this is why it actually tells me to do a quadratic regression, because it's not linear data, it looks like it's more quadratic. So do the exact same steps. Go stat, over to calculate, but rather than doing a linear regression, go down one more and do a quadratic regression. Second, second no, just, just regular, just old stat. Just press stat, over to calculate. Healy, can you not do that? Then we don't want number four, though. We don't want linear. We want quadratic this time around. Then you have to... Well, that's just because linear is what I just did last time around, so it still has that sitting up there from last time. So then type in, we need L1. We need data from L2. And then the hardest part, we got to tell it where the y variable is going. So that's vars. Over to y vars. Can you guys leave the fan one, please? I know you're ahead of me here. Functions. Functions. I don't care which y value you pick. Just pick one of them. y one's fine. Press enter. And it should give you an equation. It might take a little while to do all the work. Like your calculator is thinking for a bit here. Oh, I got that. Okay, I'm going to write out the equation in standard form here. Can you guys focus for five minutes? I'm almost done, okay? So here's the equation. Y equals 0.008x squared plus 0.54x minus 10.4. Like that's essentially the equation your calculator came up with. Is that what yours gives you? No, but I have the same graph as you were close to. Does anybody else have the same numbers I do, or do I have a mistake? Okay, so you probably have one that's mistyped then, probably. Hopefully it doesn't make a big difference when you answer the questions. And then press enter. Just going to think for a little while here, and hopefully you get what I get. Okay, so stat. Calculate. A quadratic regression. Then what we need to do is tell it where to put variables, y variables, function, function just the y one because calculate it. It's going to think for a little while and hopefully it gives you what I get there, which it does. And then if you go y equals, there's an equation there. If you go to your graph, which is where I'm going next, it should put a line right through. Okay, so you're still trying to do a linear regression. We need it to be a quadratic regression. Then L1, L2, and then we need a variable, 
A Y variable. I want you to care Y3. Really? You have a smartphone. You can't remember all the buttons on your smartphone? I use that all day, all day, though. Oh, so you're going to have to practice this a couple of times. There, and now you've got this. Same thing as mine. There's the equation there. And um, you never actually did zoom standard, looks like. So like go zoom 9 for zoom stat. And now hopefully you get a line that was throw you down. Okay, guys, let me finish off the question here, and then we can take a break. Um, hopefully you get a graph that looks something like this with a line going through it. If you still don't, we'll talk later, okay? But hopefully you're at this point here. Okay, we'll talk in a bit, okay? So just, just watch then, okay? If you have this, you're doing it right so far. Now to answer the question. The stopping distance at 30 kilometers. Is 30 kilometers an X value on this graph or a Y value? Well, 30 kilometers an hour looks like it's a speed. The first column is your X value. Your second column is your Y value. This graph essentially is this. This is your speed. And this is the distance it takes to stop, which I think makes sense. If you're going like 10 kilometers an hour, it doesn't take very long for you to stop. But if you're going like 100 kilometers an hour, it takes a little longer to get your car to stop, right? So what tool in our calculator can we use to figure out when our speed is 30? Value, value yeah. Second calculate. The value, 1x is 30. And uh, it looks like the stop stopping distance is 13.2 meters. Okay. I know. Shodi, you missed the first 10 minutes. Like, show up on time. I can help you, but like, this is you're behind the eight ball, right? If that's the reason. So, give me a second. I'll work with you in a bit, okay? So, okay, last question here. We want to figure out the maximum speed a car can travel in order to stop within four meters. Well, this is not where I'm typing in four into my value because that would be I'm traveling four kilometers an hour. I need to take this graph and put a line across here at four meters. So go to y equals, put a line across at four, and regraph it. Here's the only downside. I don't see a line. Okay, here's the reason why. I can explain this. Take a look at your window size. Your y is going from negative 15 up to 151. That line for y equals 4 is essentially right across the axes right here. That's why you can't see it. It's graphing right over top of the axes. So, well, no, we don't want to change the number. Um, like, what you could do is you could go over here and make it so that the, uh, the line right here is, like, bolded, perhaps. And that might make the line show up. It might. But I have a different strategy here. Just take a leap of faith as to where about you think. Oh, actually, you can see the line just get drawn over right here now. Take a leap of faith. This isn't the biggest deal in the world. Go second, calculate the intersect. I feel like it's going to intersect right in this general vicinity here. So to be honest, I don't think these things are going to cross more than once. So I'm just going to press yes to the first curve, yes to the second curve, and I'm going to put the cursor somewhere over underneath where the guess button is. I think that's about where it is. Somewhere underneath the guess button. Yeah. And hopefully it'll show up like mine does when y equals 4. Anybody else get this? 20.4? Yes. Yeah, 20.3. Yeah, the biggest rest of interruption, Tess Luther and Sheridan George, please return to class, room 418. Okay, so based on this data, if you want to stop your car within 4 meters, I guess you can only go 20 kilometers an hour. 4 meters, that's like for me to... So if I want to stop in that brief amount of time, I better only be going 20. That's like, that's really slow. I don't know if this is true or not, but that's the data. Okay, let me do a quick summary here, then you guys can take a break and I can help troubleshoot things where you might be lost, okay? This is a very repeatable process. You need to do it a few times though, okay? There's a lot of buttons you need to learn about and know what they do, what they accomplish, what order to do them in. 
but this is really just using a computer. Like your calculator is just a fancy little computer. Okay? You do need to have enough of a memory though to remember what all these things do. Okay? I don't have a worksheet for you to practice because to be honest, I mean, it's the same thing over and over again. We're going to do this again when we do stat. We're going to do it with things like uh, exponential functions later. We'll do uh, sinusoidal functions. So it's the same button entry. You just change the type of function up. So my recommendation here, I have this on a slide here for you. Find some questions. Now, don't do all of 1 to 9 or 5 to 12, but like try it a few times until you get comfortable knowing what your calculator does. Does that make sense? Okay. Here's the rest of our week. Tomorrow and Wednesday is work time. You have an assignment to do that I'd like done on Thursday if you want it to be considered on time. Okay. You're getting rest of today, Tuesday and Wednesday all is work time. Thursday, though, I need to start doing an introductory lesson on exponents because the, when we come back next week, I want to do this exact same um, process, only now for the exponential graph. So you don't have a lot of time on Thursday necessarily. So don't waste your time. Uh, one more thought. Um, thank you to everybody who did journal entries. I think that's worth your while. I got lots of feedback. Good. And I'd like to sit down and chat with you each individually on anything you might have got wrong if you don't know why you did it wrong. But I'm, I'm going to ask for another 10 questions on Thursday as well. So, I mean, it's not that much if you just do two a day, right? Do two Monday, two Wednesday, two Thursday. Okay, do three a day then. You know what I mean? So, okay, I've talked for a long time. I'm going to break. And uh, when you come back, hopefully you have something you can do, okay? So. Shelly, I'll come sit with you for a second here.